Here, many sperm take a long and arduous journey. Their goal, to create the basis for a miracle. Let us now look together at the individual steps required for successful fertilization and thus for the creation of a unique human being. The formation of male germ cells is known to occur from sexual maturity onwards in the testes, specifically in the seminiferous tubules. The hormonal changes during puberty initiate the production of the thread-like cells. In the epididymis, the sperm mature, are stored, and await their deployment. With each ejaculation, millions of these germ cells, along with various sexual secretions, are expelled. For fertilization to be successful, these little swimmers must overcome several hurdles. First, they need to reach the uterine cavity. The cervix, which usually acts as an important barrier against pathogens, is slightly open on the fertile days, allowing the sperm to move forward. The change in the viscosity of the cervical mucus also aids fertilization. Several days before and after ovulation, the mucus becomes less viscous, making it easier for the sperm to pass through. Nonetheless, for many cells, this is an insurmountable hurdle. Defective and dead sperm are broken down by the woman's immune cells. The ovaries are the female counterpart to the testicles. The female germ cells mature in them. Typically, one egg cell is ready for fertilization per menstrual cycle. The infundibulum of the fallopian tube, with its finger-like extensions, moves towards the mature follicle and captures the egg cell along with the sticky fluid surrounding it. From here, the oocyte moves towards the uterus. Unlike sperm, the female germ cells are not capable of independent movement. The cilia protruding into the cavity are responsible for transporting the egg cells. The coordinated movements of the cellular projections propel the germ cell forward step by step. Since the egg cell is only capable of being fertilized for a few hours, the sperm must move quickly to reach it. On their way, the sperm undergo the final maturation step, known as capacitation. During this process, the protein layer surrounding the sperm is dissolved, which is essential for fertilization to occur. This maturation step also causes the male germ cells to become hyperactive. The sperm usually meet the egg in the ampulla area of the fallopian tube. Some sperm have spontaneously released certain enzymes, which dissolve the bonds between the cells of the corona radiata and make penetration easier. When a sperm cell binds to the zona pellucida, this triggers the acrosome reaction. A small vesicle containing enzymes is located in the head of the male germ cells. The membrane of the acrosome fuses with that of the sperm, releasing the enzymes. This dissolves the zona pellucida at this point, and the male germ cell can advance further. Now it's not far away. After binding to the egg cell, the two germ cells fuse, and the cell nucleus of the sperm, which contains the genetic material, penetrates the egg cell. The cortical reaction also begins. The cortical granules are released, which cause a change in the zona pellucida. This change makes the zona pellucida impenetrable to other sperm, ensuring that only one sperm can fertilize the egg. I'll explain what happens next and how twins are created in other videos. In order not to miss anything, it's best to subscribe to my channel.